2D materials were one atom thick crystals formed in nature. Currently, electronics are dependent on semiconductors, primarily silicon, which is bulky, hard, and fragile. Think what solar panels are made of. The smallest silicon transistor, on and off switch, which are in all electronics, is 7 nanometers, limited by quantum physics. In 2010, a 1 nanometer, 7 times smaller than silicon, MOSU transistor was made. This means that we can increase the average computing per area. For example, the 2014 Apple iPad had around 3 billion transistors, making it as powerful as a fast supercomputer in 1995. But what even are 2D materials? Materials. Let's start with where you can find them. They are formed abundantly in nature and can be mined. There's a molybdenum mine in Colorado, actually. Another example of 2D material is graphene. It's one atom thick graphite. Graphene is actually stronger than diamond. One atom thick layer can support a basketball and a saran wrap thick sheet can support an elephant. Typically, they're found in their bulk form. Why even bother with individual layers? Why not just use the bulk? I'll focus on one category of 2D materials, TMD semiconductors. Let's review. An electrical conductor is a material that allows a flow of charge commonly the form of electron flow. Semiconductors are materials which are poor conductors in their natural state but can become better conductors under certain conditions. Semiconductors do not have a sea of electrons but can have the potential to conduct. This property, to switch between non-conducting and conducting, or off and on, is what makes them so critical in the use of electronics. The electrons have two possible energy states, valence and conduction. They're normally in the valence state so they're bound to one nucleus, however they can gain energy by absorbing light photons, for example, and be excited to the conduction band. When they're excited, they leave a positively charged hole in the spot and originally was, and the excited electron has a net negative charge. However, the electron is now free to conduct, moving freely between the different nuclei. However, the excited electron can't stay in the high energy state forever. It is attracted to the relatively positively charged electron holes and eventually returns back to the valence band. When the electron combines with a hole, it releases light or photoluminescence. Here's a key point. TMD bulk or multilayers have an indirect band gap, but single monolayers have a direct band gap. A direct band gap means it does not take a change in momentum to excite an electron into the conduction band, therefore a more efficient excitonic and conducting process. This means that monolayers have a greater photoluminescence than multilayers, and it takes less energy to absorb this excitonic process. In this case, less or thinner really is more. So back to the problem. How do we isolate these monolayers? Two words, scotch tape. If you stick a piece of tape onto one of these crystals, then peel it off. Some of these crystals will actually come off. If you repeat this process, you can continue to exfoliate thinner and thinner sheets until you have a crystal that is only one layer thick. Though monolayers are difficult to see with the bare eye, you can actually see them under a microscope. 2D materials are being incorporated in clothing, rocket ships, sports equipments because of their strength, conductivity, flexibility, and transparency. I invite you to grab a roll of scotch tape and start changing the world.